Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Right behind me you see the Bolshoi Theater. I am so excited and so immensely grateful that actually tonight I'm going to see the performance uh, in Bolshoi. Dr. Zhivago. If you are wondering how much I paid for the ticket, I paid 7,000 rubles. So you can calculate. This was purchased uh, two and a half months ago, was it? Or three months ago? Around two, two months ago, two and a half months ago. So in advance, and someone got me this ticket with a really good price. I was told I have a good seat. It looked like on the map, so I'm really looking forward to it. If I can record a little bit, I will, and then probably attach in tomorrow's video. Definitely we'll take some pictures. So those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will see the live stories that I put and also pictures uh, of my outfit probably and the place, of course. And what else? Yeah, and on locals as well. So just want to say I'm very, very grateful that I have this opportunity. Maybe not uh, last time in my life, but definitely the first time to be inside and to experience it, uh, you know, in real time. Right here, statue of Marx. Uh, but let's, let's just find a place to sit down and read you what I have for you today, because I have a lot of things to bring to your attention. Before I go with this, two important uh, things to, to mention. Well, first of all, I don't know if you saw my last video, that started with the statue of Vysotsky. And I cannot believe that I got a comment from the lady who was his wife. And she is the subscriber, so I just want to say hello to her. I am really, really touched that somehow you are watching my channel. Really honored, so... Yeah, small word, isn't it? Another thing, yesterday I had live stream with Andrei Martianov. As always, Andrei is to the point, brings so much knowledge, so much information about the military topics and, you know, and Russian topics as well, since he is uh, originally from Russia and he knows the realities here as well. But I had big challenges with internet yesterday. So those of you who are watching, you were watching live, I apologize for this. I know it's not my fault, but still, it wasn't easy for you to watch and those who haven't seen it um, just to give you a heads up it's not a smooth live stream it has some stops in between all right now let's get to the point because this was very long intro so probably i should uh, again put a timestamp here and what i want to tell you first three topics about uh, organ trade in Ukraine about the scandal with issuing the visas for the foreigners in Poland, which is pretty big, and about something what Polish speaking government is doing. And I want to start with this in regards to the Soviet Union. Yes, yesterday we addressed uh, that topic with Andrei Martianov. I actually asked him what is the biggest difference in lifestyle of uh, people and the Russian Federation and in the Soviet Union. So let me just get the right pages here. Okay, one second. So guys, this is very recent. This is very recent. This is what the Foreign Ministry of Poland is going to do. This person is the deputy of foreign ministry. His name is Arkadiusz Mularczyk. And in an interview with uh, Polish Associated Press, I believe it's PAP, he said in September, the officials, the official beginning of the work of the team investigating the site of losses suffered by Poland from the USSR in the years of 1939-1945 will officially begin begin its work. The aim is to prepare a report on this matter. So you see what they are trying to do? They want to investigate on the losses that Poland suffered 
because of the uh, USSR. Okay, let me read you this, this article and then I will give a little comment from me that is aligned, as always, with Mr. Maciej Maciak. Uh, so, Mularczyk asked on Wednesday when the work of the team that will examine the extent of losses suffered by Poland from the USSR will begin, uh, replied that scientists, okay, scientists, have been working for many months collecting data, working in archives and libraries. About it. At the same time, he said, the official start of the team's work will take place during a conference in Pruszkov, it's uh, close to Warsaw, outside of Warsaw, on September 19th until 20th. What is today? 15th, so in four days from now. It will be attended by dozens of scientists from Polish, but also from other countries, for example, of course, Ukraine. The deputy head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stressed that they are to prepare partial reports aimed at creating an opening balance sheet, he informed, adding that the aim is to prepare a report on the losses suffered by Poland from USSR in the years of 1939 and 1945. We will present categories of potential losses, he stressed. We'll show you the fountain, then we continue, because I really want to find like a quiet place to continue. Fountain. Love this fountain, by the way. During winter, it had all the construction going above it with lights and stuff. Magical. Ah, and here, I don't know if you see it. When I step away, there is the... Uh, very iconic hotel, Metropole Hotel. So when you see this beautiful facade of this building, this is the Hotel Metropole. Okay, where I was here. So Mularczyk pointed out that the work of the team preparing the report is difficult due to the fact that Poland, after the World War II, became a dependent country on the Soviet Union. As he emphasized, during these several decades, it was absolutely unthinkable to estimate losses. Asked Poland by Soviet Russia and practically no studies, no reports were created. So it must be said that we are starting work almost from the scratch. Okay. Hmm. When asked if there is any if there is already any idea, if there is any data, sorry guys, when, when asked if there is any data to estimate the material size of the losses, he pointed out that at this stage it is premature. Quoting him, we must remember that the losses were gigantic because they included, because they included not only the material substance, but it was also the organized plundering of works of art and cultural goods, the plundering of insurance companies, banks, and later the exploitation for many decades. Also, the so-called liberation that took place in 1945 was associated with gigantic plunder, he stressed. I'm just reading article, I'm not commenting yet. Ah, okay, let's see, let's see. This one maybe no. You have the link as always in the description box. We should also, this is from him still, we should also examine the archives that are on the territory of Ukraine, Belarus, because there is a lot of knowledge on this subject. From an objective reason, we know that there are some kinds of difficulties in Ukraine due to the ongoing war and in Belarus because of the regime of Lukashenko, which is pursuing a hostile policy towards Poland, Mularczyk said. Okay, so now my comments, which are in full alignment with Maciej Maciak and the movement for prosperity and peace. So, Ruch Dobrobytu i Pokoju, full support from me. 
the hotel, by the way, beautiful, no? Exactly what Maciej Maciek said. So if they are asking for some uh, They, they are mentioning the losses that Poland caused because of the USSR. Then again, Litva, Łotwa, so Lithuania, Latvia, Ukraine, um, all the countries, all the countries that used to be the republics of the Soviet Union, they should ask those countries as well, not just the Russian Federation, right? So if you're doing investigation in this matter, you have to ask for the uh, whatever they want, what they want, money back. I don't know what they want, how much, what they want. <laughs> Why don't you start with Ukraine? Because you have such a good, uh, good relationship with them. That was part of the Soviet Union, right? So I agree with Maciej Maciek too. It's just an absolutely shit show, guys. It's shit show. Like how Russia can even take those people seriously? How they can even, who are they gonna talk to? To have normal conversation with? There's nobody, zero, null. Ay, money. Visa scandal. From bankier.pl, Polish portal. The visa scandal, 350,000 incorrectly issued visas by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, so the same ministry, the same ministry that is digging out some stuff to ask Russia for compensation uh, is the very one that is involved now by into issuing visas that are illegal. So the corruption, right? Again. According to MPs, the names Jan Grabetz and Marcin Kierwiński, this is how many visas Poland issued for migrants from Africa and the Middle East. CBA agents entered the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, whose task was to carefully look at the visa intermediation. The case came to light thanks to a European investigation. Now, before I continue with this, uh, how they were, you know, corrupted and taking money from people, how those people were getting visa, you remember there is a referendum uh, coming in Poland with questions. This referendum will take place the same day as the day of elections to the parliament. And law and justice came up with this uh, referendum, right? You know, everyone had a question, Morawiecki had a question, and uh, Kaczynski, the leader of law and justice. So the third question in this referendum is, you know, pushed by the law and justice is, do you support the admission of thousands of illegal immigrants from the Middle East and Africa in accordance with the forced relocation mechanism imposed by the European bureaucracy? Look at this, guys. I mean, I cannot even, I cannot even. I can't. They are asking people this question. This is the question during the referendum that people will be answering. Meanwhile, there is a scandal that this, this government allowed because Ministry of Foreign Affairs is involved in this. And 350,000 visas were issued to Poland, were issued illegally. Sorry, noisy. But they are building something, so congrats. Keep on building. Okay. Uh -huh. You see? Let me see more in this article. Okay, one second here. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, so question there will be out there. Meanwhile, up to 400,000 people could enter, the, uh, could enter Poland through the back door with documents issued by Polish diplomatic missions in Hong Kong, Taiwan, United Arab Emirates, India, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Philippines, and Qatar. So in all those countries, Polish embassies, that's what I'm understanding, maybe I'm wrong, were issuing the, the visas for, by the way, by the way, FYI, as they say. So the scandal, let me narrow it. 
you have to pay 500 to 800 euros for a visa to obtain it. But in turn, it was reported that foreigners paid up to 5,000 uh, euros for a Polish visa. Euros or dollars, doesn't matter, okay? It should be up to 800 and they pay it around 5,000 even, let's say, sinking dollar. Hmm, okay. I'm telling you, shenanigans all over the place. Okay, I have one more article. I have to find it. This one is from TASS. This is nothing to laugh about. So I'm going to be very serious about it. Let me just get the right page here. One day I will be like much more professional than now, but for now, this is what it is. Okay, from TASS. Organ trade begins to flourish in Ukraine. From September 12th, uh, so three days ago, United Nations trading in organs is common practice in Ukraine and the country's law only encourages it. Russian per, uh, permanent representative to the United Nations, Vasily Nebiezna, said on Tuesday. Now quoting him, Ukrainians fall victim to organ trafficking. He said at the meeting of the United Nations Security Council on Western weapons supplies to Ukraine. More from him. We have more and more evidence of black market transplants being practiced in the country, in Ukraine. According to the Russian diplomat, Ukraine is forming a legal framework actually encouraging this. This uh, does under uh, the recently passed law on transplantation, no notarized written consent for, for transplantation from a living donor, see, living donor or his or her relatives is needed. So they don't even want to have the approval, sorry guys, my hand, the approval from the living relatives. But last part here, as a matter of fact, it is possible to extract organs from children as well. The procedure for taking organs for these who don't give consent to dominate them while alive has been simplified. So in a nutshell, I mean, it's cruelty. I don't even know what level. So pretty much any opportunity that you can make money on organ harvesting full steam ahead in Ukraine. It sounds like, no? They are changing the laws from children, from anyone, from those soldiers that many of them probably are still alive. Yeah, I'm thinking about this now. I didn't think when I was reading this article, but I think that that might be happening as, as we speak. You, you have the soldier who is not dead. They're going to harvest liver, heart, whatever they need. It's horrible, horrific. I mean, it's just like even when I talk about it, like my whole emotional body, my, my being feels it. Sometimes, you know, guys, before I end this video, because this was the last news for you today, sometimes I really feel like th those topics are, you know, this is heavy stuff for me, you know, talking about those things. And I, I try to be not too emotionally involved in this, but at the same time, I feel everything. And there will be a time this year that I will be just withdrawing from this for about a week, 10 days. I will be doing some spiritual work. It's a side note here, okay? I know it's not about politics, but I just want to say like, you have to get to know me maybe too as a person because humanity will save us, you know? News is one thing, but we have to be human. We have to be human. We have to have heart, soul, feelings in order to go through these times because these are the end of times. So continuing on this, I want to take like a, like a workshop, like a sen seminar or like a spiritual retreat 
for about a week to 10 days and just focus on my well-being, my, my brain, my spirit, my soul and just, just do that, you know. Because it takes a toll on you, it takes a lot of the energy, a lot of, a lot of energy. So that's why my traveling kind of helps me, because I balance the news and then I explore and see art and do other things that, that nurture me in a different way, you know. Anyway, this was very, very personal, but I know some of you really don't mind. All the links you will find attached to those articles in the description box under the video. Um, I would really appreciate if you join me on Locals. You have the link as well down below and in the pin comment section too. You can follow me on Instagram, especially tonight, because I will be posting the stories from Balshoi from inside. And what else? Yes, uh, if you would like to support my trip to China, you can buy me a coffee because all the money from that will go to my trip. Uh, join my mailing list just to stay in touch in case how cool huh just to stay in touch and rumble is there i think that's it i will show you this place here because during winter here is the ice skating and now you have the roll blades but i would have to leave because i already had one video with the music and I'm not sure if this music is not gonna trigger this one. So lots of love everyone. Remember, we are the leading edge and saving the humanity. Hit that like if the video brings you any value and I see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.